prevention has the same roots effectively as person-centeredness and that is uh, exemplified by the um, by our ancient um, um, our ancient uh, medical professionals, the founders of uh, medicine. So Hippocrates said, Kalium prolambvanit i therapevin, in other words, it's better to prevent than to treat, very well known uh, motto. Um, and Plato, of course, said that uh, prevention is uh, philosophizing, it's philosophy. And he meant that in, a, in, a, in the etymological way, in other words, Prevention is uh, is uh, to be keen in uh, for, to, to be keen for wisdom. In other words, to be prudent. Prevention is prudence. So that common sense, empathy, the being in touch with the person, being in touch with what's real, um, touches at the core, the philosophical core, both of person-centered medicine and of prevention. The reason why I mention this is because they are quite similar in a sense and those similarities uh, they, they, they assign to them the same degree of difficulty in dealing with passing from the uh, theoretical to the practical element and there are opportunities because of that similarity of the two and the ethos that, uh, of, of, of the two of prevention and person-centered medicine for synergy so, examples of that synergy, in, um, in person-centered medicine, we can use prevention as a means to force the implementation of person-centeredness. If you think about it, by um, applying preventive measures and more so uh, measures of health promotion, one is forced, by definition, to look into person-centered facts and person-centered characteristics of the particular individual that they have in front of them. So without thinking about person-centeredness in, in so many words, they actually do it. The other um, area which I'm going to expand on a bit uh, later is uh, that of research. Now, prevention research is thematically and methodologically related to person-centered medicine because they come from the same theoretical background and they have the same ethos. But uh, preventive research has uh, advanced quite a lot from a methodological point of view as well as the implementation point of view and that we can take advantage of in person-centered medicine because uh, prevention has faced similar problems. So this is what I'm going to advocate and look into um, a bit in, in a bit more detailed fashion. Now, the current status of prevention research in person-centered medicine, uh, to, to, to make that contrast a bit more um, pragmatic, um, the, uh, with prevention research, um, the justification of prevention has already been done in many ways. So for the past 30 or 40 years, the US and, the, uh, and Europe have funded uh, programs right, left and center, uh, and center for prevention research and they have yielded some uh, uh, evidence that justifies that prevention is uh, worthwhile doing. So there is no issue there. At the moment, the focus is on dissemination, implementation and deployment. So there are systems around that research that are being developed and evaluated. That's where the focus is with prevention research at the moment. With person-centered medicine, we're a couple of steps behind. We're still trying to translate theory into practice and we're facing a, 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 to, a to an extent a justifiable dystocia there. But we have managed to make the first steps uh, through the International Journal, which is instrumental, as well as the conferences um, like the one that we are at the moment. So the idea here is to combine the two and see whether we can use uh, the expertise that has been developed in uh, prevention research to advance person-centered medicine um, research. Uh, and of course, by extension, the combination of preventive person-centered um, person measures. So the main issues that arise from that last point, so person-centered medicine in prevention, uh, the main issues that emerge are first to demonstrate the effectiveness 
the, the issues that emerge from the demonstrating the effectiveness of person-centered preventive measures, then how to evaluate those in practice, then how to move from evaluation to deployment of those interventions, and then uh, a more broad, a broader point about uh, the process of research and deployment and how we can organize person-centered um, uh, research and in particular reference to prevention. First of all, demonstrating the effectiveness of person-centered medicine in prevention. The first issue that has emerged and has been the uh, subject of um, a number of um, uh, publications in the International Journal of Person-Centered Medicine is the, um, the contrast between evidence-based medicine and person-centered medicine, and there have been um, deliberations over this, some of which have uh, assigned a non-anthropocentric and even uh, dehumanizing um, uh, um, uh, characteristic to evidence-based medicine. I don't agree with that. I believe that evidence-based medicine is a tool, and like any other tool, if used properly, can yield um, results and in this sense we can use evidence-based medicine techniques and if appropriately adapted then can they can fit person-centered medicine and they can be anthropocentric so there is no antagonism there's synergy here as well potentially the problem why this uh, synergy is uh, um, difficult is because uh, person-centered medicine is often characterized by um, um, a few hard endpoints and uh, to, to put it simply, uh, the, um, the expected results of person-centered medicine are relatively woolly as far as uh, evidence-based medicine is concerned. And therefore, it's difficult to um, generate class A evidence from this. The same accounts for prevention, because prevention is, of course, longitudinal, and um, in many ways it's, harsh, it, it's really hard to circumscribe research on a particular topic. Of course, it's possible for some issues, but in most cases, you need a long time to see the benefits of uh, prevention research. So the combination of the two, person-centered preventive research, makes this a very difficult um, topic for evidence-based medicine, but it is possible. And why is it possible? Well, it is possible because it has been done before. In the International Journal of uh, Person-Centered Medicine, there are publications, there are papers that uh, they demonstrate that it's possible to, uh, to evaluate those measures. So the methodology can be adapted. The methodology, the expertise that we have gained from evidence-based medicine can be adapted and can be adapted to, uh, to fit the difficulties that uh, person-centered uh, topics and preventive topics present with. The problem is that it is costly and it is costly in both in a financial um, way but also uh, in, in the fact that it's demanding from procedural and practical methodological um, reasons. An important point to make here, and I think I'd, I'd like to focus your attention on this because this is probably where we should focus in, in terms of advancing uh, uh, evidence, uh, sorry, person centered preventive research, is to shift our attention from what evidence based medicine expects. To, um, to attain from uh, research, <coughs> i.e. class A, as it's called, evidence, very hard uh, evidence that comes through randomized control trials that take ages to achieve, and to shift that importance onto less, less strong evidence, class B or C, that nevertheless can be very useful. Um, an example of this would be, uh, just to make it plain, if you have, uh, if you take smoking as an example, it would be foolish not to do something about smoking before you get um, very convincing evidence from randomized control trials over 40 years. We know that there is something wrong with smoking and lung cancer. We know that uh, we need to do something. Why wait for the results? And that is a very obvious example. But it, with, uh, we need to convince people that do research and preventive research that person-centered outcomes fit exactly the same bill. So they make sense, use them. So policymakers, researchers, people that are involved in such um, uh, research, they need to be convinced. They need to be convinced that 
uh, even if you don't have this very convincing evidence, uh, as far as evidence-based medicine is concerned, you can still go ahead and, uh, and fund such research that relates to person-centered uh, outcomes. So longitudinal and soft nature of person-centered uh, prevention complicates this, but it is possible. One way of uh, doing this, of convincing people to go ahead, uh, despite the fact that they cannot get this very convincing evidence, um, is to use short-term circumscribed interventions as um, examples of um, person-centered um, effective interventions. This has been done before, it has been done for prevention, and it has been done in preventive psychiatry, so cost-effectiveness in preventive psychiatry has been proven for particular niche areas in a very convincing manner, and it has been used as leverage to suggest that other preventive interventions in that area of medicine can be useful. So we can do the same with person-centered medicine. We can say that we can find areas that uh, we can circumscribe quite well a particular person-centered intervention, demonstrate an outcome, positive outcome, and use that as leverage to suggest further uh, research. Now, moving on to the process of research, that's the last bit of my the issues that I was going to discuss today, the process of research, so stay, taking a step back and looking at the overall process of research and how you plan that. In prevention, uh, this has been done over, over many years, initially the Institute of Medicine produced a very simple loop, a research loop, which looks something like this. So you have, um, you identify a problem, you design an intervention, then you test it in practice, and then you go back to the beginning and see whether you can improve it. A classic um, audit loop which can be used in research as well. So that's very simple, but as you can see has no relevance whatsoever to person-centered medicine. Then other societies, other bodies such as the Society of Prevention Research uh, have devised uh, even more elaborate um, loops of research uh, in prevention which start, as you can see, I'm not going to go into this in detail, but it starts to incorporate aspects that relate to person-centered uh, characteristics. Not exactly though, and I think this is where we can um, intervene and we can include person-centered aspects in those loops and therefore we can get person-centered centered outcomes from those loops. So that's another point that uh, person-centered medicine can, um, um, can, can improve uh, prevention research. Okay. And last slide uh, about the opportunities for integrating uh, person-centered prevention research to mainstream research. So one point is to combine person-centered uh, medicine with prevention research platforms. Uh, it's what exactly what, what I just uh, talked about. So we can take the schemas and the feedback loops and the systems that have been created in prevention research and enrich them with the anthropocentrism that is suggested by person-centered medicine. Um, and uh, person-centered medicine in response can take the uh, expertise that uh, prevention research has developed and based on the same difficulties that prevention has faced, because it has the same theoretical background as person-centered medicine, um, use that expertise to, to, promote, the, uh, to promote research in person-centered medicine. Um, the other point that we must do is to negotiate that contention point with evidence-based medicine and start what I call ethics of heroism dialogue, so basically suggest that heuristic knowledge, which often is characterizes um, um, knowledge that pertains to, to person-centered medicine, is not useless and it must be taken seriously and some of that evidence must be used in practice and uh, taken seriously in terms of funding for research. And last but not least, in person-centered medicine we need to produce evidence we don't have enough yet. So the last thing to do, um, in some ways the first thing to do, is to produce the evidence on which we can base um, further research. And with this I'd like to end. Thank you very much for your attention.